Hello ladies and gents, this is another video brought to you by Ants Hood. And today's video is going to be about my Acromyrmix octospinosis or my leaf cutter ants and the fungus is dying off. So this is another one of my species that I haven't done an update for about two to three months. And if you remember back from that video, it was where I gave them the freedom of my ant cave on that cool bit of rope. I'll put a link in the top right corner now so you guys can check it out. Unfortunately, two months or two, three months down the line, should I say, it isn't looking good and well you'll see in a second in this video i do have an extensive playlist of these ants so if you want to check that out i'll put that in the top right corner now even though you can check out the video yourself i am going to do a quick clip from our last video as well so you can see how the fungus garden was there to how it is now so you can get a good contrast of how much it's decreased in size so this is where i was at I had a nice good size to it and to believe it or not it actually got bigger from this between videos as well before i had a big decrease in size but it was quite high it was way past the thermostat which the batteries died on it. i really need to replace it but it was doing all right but this is it now as you can see it is significantly smaller and there only seems to be really two mounds of growth um which the two mounds just here and here but if you see the bulk at the back it seems like that's more fungus that's dying off so i am a little, getting a little bit concerned about them at the moment uh i don't know what's happening with it i did stop hydrating it because it was self-sufficient with the hydration but i've started that again because i thought maybe that was the issue with it but i'm really really concerned about it and obviously because they've decreased the size so much the dirt pile in the outworld that i use for them is quite significant plus they've got leftovers from food so if you look at that dirt pile it is pretty big and i am going to go and clean that out make this sure it's all clean for them ready to go i don't particularly think this is going to be affecting the growth of the fungus but it's an element that definitely needs cleaning out anyway so i might as well crack on but i also need to apply barrier to the top of there because i'm going to move in all the ants out of the other outworld into this so i need to reapply the barrier so they're not on the roof and i need to give it a good clean out I've got a little cooling unit, so obviously that blows cold air. So because I need to go into the top of that, where the fungus is, I need to turn this off so they don't get an airflow going into the fungus garden because it does not like that at all. So the first thing I need to do is take these ants off and then brush them back into the outworld where I can and police them up and then reapply the barrier around it. Now, there's not going to be a very thick barrier around this, so the larger ants will be getting out, as you'll see later on in the videos, that they can still get past it. But it's only generally the larger ants, but it happens. I'm not too fussed. But it also doesn't help that I'm thinking about it. Now they're distracted with some food as I film this, I'm going to take that thermostat out and replace the battery. Then I start moving them out from this, uh, the outworld on the right to the outworld on the left. Now this video is 29 minutes long and I do not expect you to watch all of 29 minutes just watching me clean this out. So I am going to speed it up as I narrate a little bit. Now believe it or not, the this isn't as easy as it looks. At the moment as you can see I'm getting a bit of a twig or some cotton bud and I'm moving them out. I've already put cotton wool in the tunnel as you can see there to the centre of the screen to stop them getting in. So all I'm doing is getting the, most of them out with a bit of cotton wool, a bit of stick and stuff like that, whatever I'm using to put them into the fungus garden area should I say. Now I am going to properly clean this out world out because it's absolutely disgusting and it needs a good clean out. But it's part of the issue that you find is that where you've got a mound of it just there, there always seems to be the smallest ants of the this genus that seem to be in the, the rubbish area. And I think that's because they're tending to the rubbish and stuff like that, organizing it. I don't know what they do, but there is always a significant amount of tiny, tiny ants. So that means when I'm cleaning, cleaning the, that rubbish out, I need to put it into a container sift through it to make sure there's no tiny tiny ants in there and obviously the bigger ants you get caught up in it as well and I, this takes is time consuming as always and i did let it get quite big but with the amount of fungus that they've been dismantling recently that's why it's built up so quickly and, uh, and i've not really been able to spend much time on actually cleaning my ants out at the moment because i am smashing the overtime at work as if you see my synopsis at the moment i can't get in there to clean them and that's a good day job that so i haven't touched them for a while to clean them out so they're pretty disgusting but these guys with the state of the fungus i'd like i said i don't think this is actually affecting the growth of the fungus but it's still something you don't particularly want in the outworld um when they're feeding from it going forward um i was talking to the missus about this today i don't have the spare cash because at the moment i'm saving up for a new camera 
um, for you guys to get better quality in a macro lens and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go onto Wakushi not long after editing this video and uploading it, and I'm going to buy a new pod for these. I need some outworlds for my Mesa Barbarus because the uh, S4, I think it is they're using, isn't big enough. So I am going to spend a lot of money with there, but I'm going to put it on PayPal credit so future Hood can worry about that and not me right now. Now, I know a lot of you guys are going to be raising the issue about the... Uh, temperature and stuff like that maybe that's affected affected the fungus growth very true but i am regulating the temperature within the the requirements of the queen which is no more than 30 because it will kill all of the semen inside her and she won't be able to reproduce but also i am keeping the temperature around max of 28 i think it's been i've noticed during the hottest days and that's because I'm using that cooling device in the back. Luckily enough, those thermostats that I've got, yes, there's a couple of variants, maybe a 0.2 degrees in them, but generally speaking, they'll kick in if it's too hot. So you can put a too cold, sorry, so you can put a heater on it, but you can then switch it to the different setting to cool, which means when it goes over a certain height, it kicks in that uh, cooling fan, which helps keep the room cool. Now, I'm not too fussed about airflow over the fungus chamber with this because it's a fairly self-contained unit. Uh, with some air holes in it so there's not going to be a lot of airflow going into it so I'm not concerned that that is the issue with my fungus but they are very picky about what they're cutting at the moment as well uh, they seem to be going through a phase where they're just not that bothered about cutting everything and anything they still go crazy for fresh rose petals and I did uh, much to my wife's annoyance cut off a fresh uh, rose flower off one of my bushes in my garden and I will be putting that in later and you can see they still quite like cutting that and you'll see that in a bit anyway. I did finally give up recording this because I did have something else that I wanted to film and it was killing my battery so I stopped it and then you'll cut forward to this photo. What you will notice with this even though this, most of the rubbish is out I do clean that up so it's all squeaky clean but if you look to the tunnel on your left or the hole on your left you'll see there's a cap in there. Now that cap actually belongs in the thermostat uh, reading uh, access which is just here but what the ants did is that they picked it off and then when I was trying to pick it up because I'd already pulled the tube out to stop them climbing onto the roof it fell in there and I couldn't get out for love nor money so once I clean all that out I'm going to get that out and replace it where it's supposed to be. With the help of my keyboard hoover and some wet cotton wool I managed to clean it out to a decently good standard but now I need to attack that to try and get it out which is going to be, which it was I'll tell you now, was a pain. What I had to end up doing was actually completely dismantle this uh, pod so I could get to the bare bits. So I can actually try and get in the, in the that little hole to try and get the cap out. But I can tell you it wasn't moving for love nor money. So I had to literally dis push the cotton wall that was blocking the entrance hole all the way through into the tunnel, disconnect it, turn it upside down and try and wiggle it out. And that finally worked, but it was a pain. So what I ended up doing was to wedge it in with some cotton wool, as you can see here, and force it down. So that made it nice and tight, so hopefully the ants won't be able to lift it up like it did previously. And then what I did with the hydration area to stop the ants getting down there, because there were some hiding underneath that cap, I put a small bit of tubing in there, then ran some cotton wool in there. And technically speaking, because the tube's in there, they won't be able to get access to the hydration area and excavate into it, which they started to do. But... You know it, it just makes me feel better because if they heavily excavate into the cotton wall i know they're trying to get down i can just pull it out and replace it so no harm no foul now luckily for me the prototypes were fit together with friction so it's quite easy for me to pull it apart and put it back together again now i don't think the retail versions are that easy i think they actually glued in or whatever method that Rikushi's used but like I said, it's the prototype. So what I actually did, I put the ring on at the top, but I actually take that off and then reapply a fresh barrier. So it kind of slows them down getting onto the roof if I need to take off and get some food in there, because that's a real issue with this setup. Reconnecting them was fairly painless as well, even though trying to get the tube back in was a pain in the bum. All I did was connect it together, then pull the cotton wool from the access out, so I didn't have to worry about any escapees trying to connect them up like I do with all my other ants, which all you guys know I'm absolutely terrible at. In fact, from here, you can actually really see how much that fungus has shrunk as well. Uh, it is a point of concern. Now, I've got some macro shots I'll put up at the, towards the end of this video anyway, so you guys can see, but there is still some live fungus on there, so it's not completely died off. They are There is live fungus, so that's a plus. I actually seen the queen when they first dismantled it before building onto it um, a little while ago as well, so I know she's still cutting around. I don't think she's infertile or anything like that because I still see quite a fair bit of brood. And if you can tell by my numbers of ants, which you can see here, because uh, they're all in one container now, I've still got a large population, so they're not overly affected. Now, they don't feed off the fungus per se, 
what they do is that they'll get the leaves and they'll get the sap from the leaves or the carbohydrates from the leaves because of the sweet stuff that the leaves produce and that's where they get their food from so as long as they keep feeding them the numbers won't shouldn't should I say technically crash with my workers but what I will probably find over a period of time is because there isn't the fungus to support the new brood coming through then my numbers will actually drop off anyway as they die with old age etc but let's hope by that point the fungus has grown big again and there's plenty of brood and this is what I was talking about, how easy it was just to pull the cotton wool out so they all got into the out world. I did have to pick them off the cotton wool, as you can probably see me doing now. But um, like I said, that wasn't a major issue. And compared to my normal disasters connecting tubes up, it went relatively easy. Now, this was all the rubbish that I took out of them. As you can see, there's a lot of detritus from the old fungus and the, there's loads of dead in there and there's some leafy bits as well. So that won't go to waste. What I'm going to do is put that in my terrarium so all the goodness can go into the terrarium, all the little insects that I've got in there, all the cleanup crew and stuff like that. I've got plenty of food for them as well. And it also puts nutrients back in to my terrarium soil. So it's all good. You all know I love a macro shot and I haven't done one yet, so here's one of the fungus gardeners. You can see there is still plenty of fungus there, so I'm not massively concerned about the fungus garden itself because it's still live, it's still active. Why they've not grown it as much as normal, I don't know why, but I'm looking at how many workers there, they've got to have something to do, so make bloody fungus for me. Hopefully going forward with those measures that I'm putting in place with the nice clean out world if it was affecting it Hopefully it will stop having a negative effect on them and it will grow nicely Now this is the older stuff as well and you can see there's still fungus on it But this will be dismantled in the next coming weeks or so So they really need to start growing what they've currently got It is a massive point of concern. I am kind of worried about it as it, as it were as a whole now I'm glad there's still a live fungus there because obviously that's a big factor. If there's no live fungus, then it's index for my Connolly. Um, uh, end of my Connolly, should I say. But you can clearly see there's plenty of fungus still. Like I said before, I did actually put a rose um, in here as well off of my garden, which my wife was very annoyed about. But they do seem to like cutting the rose. And I've got a time lapse and cutting it up in. I'll put that in towards the end of this video anyway. Let's just hope that it makes my fungus grow um, because it's a nice little treat for them. Once I've got a time out of this, I've got a load of leaves to put in there as well so they're not just got like one rose. When it comes to leaf cutters, you just can't beat a time lapse and this time lapse is awesome. And as you clearly see from the fungus, they are moving it over. Now, I'm not saying that what I've put in place is going to save my leaf cutters. I'm not saying they're going to completely die off because they're still blatantly living fungus there. But it is a point of concern. I'm also going to get another pod, as I alluded to earlier, so I can connect it up. So hopefully they can keep their food away from the trash and still use the old pod as their trash heap as they was. But yeah let's just hope it works well, that's it for today then guys i do hope you enjoyed this video it wasn't on the great greatest topics because it's never good to point out when your answer are not doing too well and as you guys know on my channel i try and tell the truth about ant keeping so you guys can learn from my mistakes and do hopefully do better but if you've got any questions or anything like that you can find me on instagram and facebook just look for ants hood also, you guys are a massive help if you like and subscribe to my channel and leave a comment if you've got any points of view from today's video as well, because they're all helpful for me. But also a big thank you to my Patreon supporters. So please join me in saying a big, super massive, huge thanks to, whenever it scrolls up, Adam W, Adrian, Antantics, Antimatter, David D, Jason W, Paul A, Pavance, PJ Grant and the... 530 ski i will get that right at one point and if you want to become a patron please check the link in the description below but i've not just got patreon if that's not your cup of tea i've also got my youtube membership so i owe a big massive thank you also to antimatter pj grant and wakushi if you want to become a youtube member i think there should be a tab underneath this video just click that and follow the instructions but anyway guys i will stop talking rubbish now Thank you for watching my video and I look forward to seeing my next one. Bye bye for now.